Okay, people. So, Little Bone Lodge. Right, it is a new horror thriller. Right, dark, psychological. Um, thanks to the good people at Signature, they hooked me up with the film. So, yeah, I was able to uh, check it out. It is directed by Matthias Hon um, and written by Neil Limpow. The film is produced by Mark Lane, Leonora Darby. Uh, it is co-produced by Nicholas Chow, executive produced by Peter Bevan, Simon Crow, Matthew Joiners, and Marina Sarah Jojo. Christopher Carmichael was on music, Job Rennick cinematography, Niles Howard edited the piece, Nua Meki production design, uh, Colleen Buck costume design, hair and makeup. We have Christine Nicklin Rivet, Chelsea Murphy. Genesis Lowe and Bridget Gardner. Production management was Tala Hansen. And our cast is Ma is played by Jolie Richardson. Pa is played by Roger Ajaj Ajabu. Uh, we have then got Maisie, played by Sadie Savella. Um, Matty is Harry Cadby. His brother Jack is Neil Limpow. We also have McAllister, played by Cameron Jack. Duncan, played by Ewan Bennett. Uh, PC Adams is played by Clifford Samuel. DC Stanton is played by Jamie Melrose. And, well, you can't forget Bella, who's played by Sharon Young. Now, the gist of the story. Right? It's set during a vicious storm. Two criminal brothers on the run seek refuge in a desolate farmhouse. Taking the resident family captive, they find the house holds dark secrets of its own. Bum, bum, bum. Now, Matthias, right, had done um, the following to say in a director's statement. All the actors truly got into their characters on set, subscribing to varying degrees of method acting, which I tried to support the best I could and think translated to great performances on set. And while the film is dark and twisted, I wanted to make sure that we can understand the warped logic of each of the protagonists, however psycho psych psychotic they turn out to be. With Little Bone Lodge, I wanted to do a film where every element is considered, placed, and choreographer chore choreographed to create tension and mystery and carve the characters into our brains in the most vivid and gut-wrenching way. I also cherish the notion of trying to keep wrong-footing the audience. The warm, loving mother turns out to be someone entirely different from what we anticipated the villainous brother seems to have a heart of gold, but then reveals his selfish side. The innocent juvenile turns out to be tough as nails. Visually, I wanted to embrace the darkness of the characters and capture the film with dark and moody imagery. Full of grit, dirt and texture. The camera is a character in this story. Shooting one camera handheld allowed me to get close to the actor's eyeline and really 
feel empathy for them. I aim to brighten the heighten the feeling of isolation and hopelessness by contrasting their claustrophobic character close up to with epic landscapes which I filmed myself in Scotland. I collaborated with DOP John Job Rennick and we used an Ari Alexa LF camera and my favorite lenses, the Canon K35S, which are both sharp but have a pleasing vintage flair and character as used in Aliens. We shot wide open as often as possible, again to heighten the character's sense of isolation. For the soundtrack, I worked with my frequent collaborator, Christopher Carmichael, who combined experimental soundscapes with terrifying beats and haunting melodies to draw us into the film. We explored plenty of experimental synth machines, analog instruments like the Viking violin and makeshift drums. I tried to to make the viewer experience an Hitchcockian delight in the twisted darkness of the characters and story. We know something is off, but we don't know what. Dramatic irony, suspense, and the depth of the characters should keep us glued to the screen and want to make take the viewer to a place worse than death and serve up a story impossible to forget. Now, people, I will say, after watching this film, I think they managed to do that. I, I think they managed to do that. Now, on paper, right, we have seen plenty of films about visitors showing up, right, taking people hostage and all of that. So there's a sense of you, you're suspecting of what is going to come, right? It starts off with this whole family affair. It's a birthday. Seems very nice, you know, very civil, happy, sweet, warm, caring. But there's a storm going on outside, a storm like no other. And that's always an ominous thing in this type of film, right? So when the knock on the door comes, you're just like, hmm, I have a feeling this is not going to go well, right? Now, initially, things seem to be going in a certain direction, and then it changes. But here's the thing, right? Where you think, okay, this is going to be this, we take these nice little turns. Right, these derailments of the story that send us into these different places, and you have these moments of, yo, what the fuck did just happen there? Wait, what? And that's great, right? That's great because you like to be wrong footed in a thriller. No one wants to go, okay, this is going to happen. And then that's exactly what happened, right? You're, there's no surprises. It's no shock and awe. It's just that story. Now, sometimes, you know, because of the acting and the way they told that familiar story, it's still okay. It still works. But you do want that fresh thing, that, that newness, that intriguement. And Little Bone Lodge, I kind of feel it, it delivers all of that. Right? Now, this type of film, it definitely weighs on the acting talent you have. right? Because it's all about emotions. When there are secrets involved and things aren't what they seem, you need your cast to be able to give you nuance, be able to layer those emotional outputs. And, man, I mean, Jolie Richardson, right? God damn, she kicks ass all the time. So there's no surprise there. But the, the other actors involved, I mean, crazy talented, 
crazy talented. You know, we get some superb performances. Harry Cadby is Matty, right? Because um, he, his character has EPO, e, e -U -O, EP, grr, like emotional uh, personality disorder. Um, yeah, I think that's the way you say it. Um, yeah, E U E U P D. Uh, so in a lot of films, right, these sorts of things are, are, are played in a certain way, but here, you know, you're like, okay, right? No, this make this like it's not a glaring thing, but it works within the story. You know, Sadie. Now, I think there's a big thing here with language. And there's some certain language used at the beginning, which I think when I hear that, I, I kind of think, hmm, I feel something's up. I feel something's up. Uh, but you're not quite sure, right? So the arc of Sadie's character, Maisie, is very interesting. You know, we, we have this wide-eyed, innocent girl. And, right, it's not an easy thing to put across, right? But still with the intrigue, but loving, love for the family and just all of this stuff. And she does a great job. Great job. You know, Neil, as the brother Jack, right, has to show that brotherly love. But then there's that vicious side. Now, there is one moment later in the film where I do kind of feel his character isn't necessarily going to have qualms in doing a certain thing, right? But that aside, Great, great. Now, I think Roger Ajub as par, he has one of the toughest things here because his character doesn't speak. So everything is through the eyes, which not an easy thing to do. Not an easy thing to do at all. So having an actor that can deliver that kind of performance, that's impressive. Yeah, really is impressive, you know. And so, yeah, this film, boom, it is great, very great. Dark tone, you know, which adds to that foreboding. Right, adds to that feel of oh, things that aren't good will be happening here. Right, this isn't a happy story. This is something else right so all of that works you know you have the because you know maddie and uh jack have kind of invaded this house so you have moments where they're grabbing people and forcing and because we've got this close-up camera work a lot of the time you really feel it you really feel it it is uh yeah like, just really well put together and fought out, you know, really well. Now, you do kind of think to yourself, how is this going to end, right? Because it looks like there is no happy solution here, right? It's just a mess. But the way it ends has you, like, fuck. <sighs> Oh my gosh. You know, ain't you are definitely people, trust me, you are definitely gonna be on the edge of your seat with this one. You know, you will definitely be on the edge of your seat. It's uh yeah, just got enough to keep you hooked all the way. You know, the location is great, it really helps to add to the story, yeah. 
there's it's very confined but because it's big and you know they're, they're in the stables and they're just these other kind of bits it, that helps keep you on your toes and then just some of these discoveries let's say you you won't see them coming trust me there is a bit where i'm thinking to myself something right around uh, you know what i ain't even gonna say this is, i feel that will give too much away people you know what just go watch the film go watch the film you will not be disappointed trust me it drops on a monday the 22nd of may be available on all your favorite streaming platforms. All the information is in the, you know, the episode. So go to the website, right? Episode 225, part one, and you'll find all of that. But people, trust me, you will not be disappointed, right? This isn't your typical, you know, home invasion film. It really isn't. It is, you know, gives you a visage of something and then it pulls the rug away. But in a good way, people. In a good way. So, yes, Little Bone Lodge, go check it out. People, you will not be sorry. <laughs>